Never trust the police. It's the largest body of organized crime in the country. You know, you keep on saying, well done, well done, well done, very good, very good, very good what? Who have you killed? Who says they were the right people? Let us not celebrate and encourage this kind of a justice system. Firstly, we do not even know whether they are the real culprits. Secondly, if they were trying to run away, do you have to shoot? Surely you can, your policemen fit in service. Why can't you run after them and get them? So it seems that some people are very delighted by this shortcut to justice. But you must look at this a little bit more carefully. The persons who say even if it's a fake encounter, it doesn't matter, are probably presuming that the person killed is the person who committed the rape and murder. How does anyone know that these boys were guilty of rape and murder? Because the police say so. That you are condemning an innocent person to his death. You are telling the parents of that innocent boy if he was innocent. It doesn't matter if your son was innocent or guilty. It doesn't matter. Somebody had to die, so he had to die. For them, a closure is understandable, but I do not understand the celebration of the general public because an encounter killing should never be appreciated, should never be done. And look at this stupid story that is being turned. I just saw the press conference of the commissioner who says they were shooting us and therefore we shot back. Now, these are four accused it is, a, uh, it is stated that they were truck drivers and cleaners and they had the, this thing to pull away the arms from the hundreds of policemen that must have been accompanying them. They pulled the arms and they started shooting. Now, you know, come on, let us not, we are not fools. We understand how police works, we understand how everything happens. Let us not celebrate and encourage this kind of a justice system. Let us not celebrate and encourage this kind of encounters. We have a rule of law in the country and the rule of law must follow. And of course, I believe that in such like cases, there should be fast track court, there should be immediate appeal, time bound appeals, time bound mercy petitions. Everything should be finished in minimum time. But that doesn't mean that we have trigger happy nation. I want to know how is everybody 100% sure, given the track record of the police in this country, that the real rapists are not roaming uh, uh, free. We don't know. Using people's anguish, despair and anger, the police is actually usurping the part, power of the court. The right. police is escaping accountability just when hard questions are being asked. Now there has been in the recent years a lot of criticism of the judiciary for delay in rape cases. So don't presume that when there's a delay in the rape trial, it's always the magistrate's fault. Very often it's the prosecution's fault. The prosecution is not ready. The police are involved in other bandobas duty and VIP security. And the prosecutors take their own time. So there is a there may be a default on the court's part as well, but there are ways to expedite that. It is a very clear thing in criminal law that a police officer cannot take law into their own hands. They just can't do it. Now the problems in the justice system are immense. And I think this should really be a wake up call for all of us who work in the justice system to make sure that these, these delays are uh, dealt with. Now, Primarily, this is, I think, the problem of the government and the government's coordination with the High Court, right? Um, that we must have more judges, more just just more of the justice system. The, the reason that we have these delays is that the bandwidth of the justice system is very limited. We have one of the lowest judges per million, one of the lowest police per million in the world, right? Mm -hmm. Police per million population, judges per million population. This has not changed. The government has to be serious about the judiciary. You can't uh, you you can't flog the judiciary as a um, uh, as an alternative and get away and brush everything under the carpet. The judiciary is now 
uh, working at virtually half its strength. Okay, half its strength. You do not have the wherewith. You are not giving them the the infrastructure, and yet you are piling cases and cases onto them. How do you expect the judiciary to react? Uh, infractions in your in your working of the system and taking alternative routes, measures is not rule of law. You can't cut corners and you can't allow the police to uh, accuse, investigate, and then judge and all also execute the sentence. You can't allow it. So when you have four people that you have very suddenly arrested, right, mm -hmm. and you. Take them for some kind of on-the-spot inspection, and you know, for them to uh, verify certain facts at 3:30 in the morning, not in the golden hour of evidence. Many, many, many days later, particularly when you were sleeping on your own duties when the woman was alive, and you were meant to file an FIR and uh, look for her, and you would have got the actual culprit, you know, in the act or in the attempt. Then, at that time. And you were sleeping there. Now to execute these people and to be hailed by the country as heroes, I mean, we can see the problem. The law will presume that the police officers are guilty of murder, and the police officers will show, will be required to prove that they are in fact innocent. So there's a reversal of the burden of proof. There should be an FIR registered against the crime of killing this must also be investigated now as per the guidelines and terms of the full bench judgment of the andhra pradesh high court there should be an fir against the police officers who are guilty also we learn that the head of the team of police officers is a man who is a serial encounter specialist so he is some kind of vigilante is some kind of moral policeman who believes that it is his duty to kill people instead of taking them to court.